Welcome to 10 Femme, conversations with real women who are achieving success on their own terms. My name is Danielle, and my mission is to motivate and ignite you to execute on your goals. Thank you, Azania Stewart, for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for inviting me into your lovely home. You're most welcome. So you and I met probably about a month ago at an event at the NED, um, which was Story Story. And you got up and told the most wonderful story that made me giggle. We won't talk about that story yet. We might talk about it later. (laughs) (laughs) But I immediately thought, what an amazing goddess. And that is exactly what I thought. I was like, this woman has the stature, the grace. You're very funny. And I thought I have to interview you and get to know you better and tell the world about you. Oh, thank you so much. That was a wonderful event, wasn't it? And just really powerful and... um, I was happy to stand up. I don't know, mm. usually sometimes you get a bit nervous or, but everyone was standing up and saying a piece. So I just felt yeah. the need. So thank you for feeling that energy. My pleasure. So let's start right at the beginning. What did you want to be when you grew up? Um, so what I wanted to be was a firefighter. Mm. Uh, was, you know, I feel like that's as a kid, you want to be a doctor, you want to be, um, but I truly was like, no, I want to, I wanted to drive the truck is what I really wanted to. Um, and I just felt like that would be part of like a team and helping people. I've always been about kind of that in my life. Um, mm. so that was my biggest thing in my career, like, okay, I'm going to be a firefighter. And then mm. the basketball game really started really young. Mm. Um, I was playing netball. I was playing loads of different sports. And even when I go speak to kids now, I say, try everything. You know, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know basketball because it's not really a big sport here. Mm. Um, so I was doing everything. I was doing football. I was doing round, just having fun being a kid. Mm. And then that's where the basketball came pretty early, uh, about 13, 14 years mm. old, which is late compared to the rest of the world. There's, you know, America starting seven, eight, Europe. Yeah. Um, so I was probably like year eight, uh, that basketball came into like, wow, this is what I want to do. Do you think you were naturally sporty and potentially pigeonholed into the netball and basketball because of your height? Or is that just something that you organically chose? Well, I think the height does help. Yeah. I'm six foot four. Um, but I, I just loved the team aspect. Like I don't, cause I never had played like tennis or golf, mm. like singular or track really that much. Um, I just liked hanging out with my friends and I got mm. to see them on the weekend. We'll go to games. So I think that really helped. Um, and then I just started to get really focused. Like, wow, I can do more with this sport. Um, mm. so I think that's, Okay, yeah, I think being tall helps, but there are shorter players in basketball. Mm. Um, but yeah, maybe because I, I played netball and then I went to a school that had a basketball team mm. and then they saw me. So the height mm. obviously um, probably is why they pinched me up. But I was terrible. Like I was so, um, I was six foot four, but I was 16. I couldn't catch the ball. I was mm. very gangly. I wasn't confident in my body. Um, so it took me a, a long time to really um, be that goddess kind of mm-hmm. empowered, like, no, this is me. So yeah. this is who I am and you're going to take it if you like it or not. Did you have a mentor during that phase to build your confidence or did you just prove to yourself after trying and trying that you were capable? Um, I think it was, yeah, trying and trying. I think it was, um, it was hard because I had short friends. Yeah. So I was always like bending over, talking to them. Um, I wasn't really into boys yet, so I wasn't really confident. Um, They wouldn't really talk to me that much because of the height difference. Um, So it kind of just took a while. I would say like 19 years old was when I really was like, when I walk into a a room, I take the power of the room. Everyone's going, who's she, you know? And where before I would shy away from that look, where now I walk in and I know that's gonna come. Yeah, so Mm. you've got to own it, Uh, but it does take time. Um, So I do, I speak to uh, ladies, young girls who are, you know, six foot plus, and they're like, well, what do you do? How did you date short guys? I'm like, yeah, I do all of that. Mm. But it's about that confidence inside and that takes time. That's not an overnight thing. So, At what point did you decide to go pro? And when you decided to go pro, did you completely have to 
rearrange your entire life routine mm. become stricter with your diet your sleep everything to, to achieve that i think it i was really lucky to be honest my next step my next step was kind of planned it was quite easy to see so um, I left school, well, I left England at 16, so I did my GCSEs and then moved to America, mm. left my family, left my friends and decided to go to high school. So then I went to high school for three years. Mm. That was kind of its path, do this. And then... Um, Sorry, was that under a scholarship for basketball? Um, no, for no, no, no. So basketball... Um, uh, we funded, I did stay at my coach's mum's house, so mm. it was it was quite difficult. And I didn't really come from um, a wealthy family, so we really kind of just scraped together and tried to help me as much as I could. And then... Um, uh, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the cat. Just the cat. <laughs> um, so then I went to university, so that was for four years, and that was a scholarship. Mm. And at that moment, when I was in high school, I'm like, wow, like I'm going to come out of university with no debt. Mm. just because of basketball you know and that was really like yeah a push for me um so then the four years okay this is my next four year goal and then the year I graduated was 2012 mm. which was then the Olympic Games so then that kind of then moved me into the Olympic Games and then I became a pro so mm. it was really a bit of luck and yeah. but also just kind of destiny like okay boom 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 everything was aligned and I just kept being focused following the journey mm. um but then i really got serious about like uh how i'm looking about my physique being serious about the sport was probably um two years prior to the olympic games okay. getting ready for the olympics you want to be in the best shape of yeah. your life mm -hmm. so i'm going to pull you up on a word that you just used okay which was luck mm -hmm. so i do believe in luck but I think that if you're not willing to take the opportunity and put in the hard work, things don't happen. So I know it was a lot more than just luck mm -hmm. for you. So you must have made a decision that you wanted to be in the Olympics. You made a decision to travel. You made a decision to diversify yourself and have those experiences. What do you think was inside you pushing that? Was it your family just something inherent in you that knew that you know what knew what path and direction you wanted to go on or were you really kind of like let's see where this pans out I'm going to put in the effort that I need but I don't really have a north star well I would agree with you about the luck part I think you're right um I think I did put in a lot of work because I knew um in high school I needed the grades to mm. go to a four-year school um so it was like okay focus in what could I I do um I struggled with school it wasn't simple for me mm. I'm really badly dyslexic so mm. I had to put in extra work um so that was part of it and then um then the college part was still the dyslexia was still kind of holding me back school wise but yeah. in America they're very adamant on good grades or you don't have the right grades you're not playing you know so mm. that was a very important part of schooling um, but yeah, I just kind of just, I always wanted to be a basketball player by then. And, and it was like, okay, I'm going to be the best version of that. And then I just started learning my powers the same way how, you know, 19 being this, um, tool, I found it in basketball where the power is quite a like fine line of, um, it's a power of if I don't come in this building and practice and come focused and ready and bring my energy, I can ruin a whole practice. Mm -hmm. And I found that out about my junior year, which is about 20, 21. Yeah. And I remember I was just having a really bad day. Like it was a stress outside and I brought that inside. Mm -hmm. And my coach was like, run, run on the, everyone. Da -da. And she's just going at us. And I was like, wow, okay. The next day, day same attitude that I had same practice and I thought third day okay Azania just take a moment leave that crap outside yeah. and come in and focus boom the practice is amazing yeah. I'm like okay was that me and then I started to find this like I have the power to really um change a practice change a game mm. and it's a it's a 
I wouldn't say it's a dangerous power because I don't abuse it. I know what I need to bring, but it can it can be seen as like, oh, no, no, you can't, you know, or arrogant or whatever. But I, I truly believe I can um, change a team, a practice or yeah. a game. So absolutely. Right. I mean, mindset is everything. Absolutely everything. The narrative that you tell yourself when you're about to do something or even after the fact is the reality that mm -hmm. you bring. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually... And you can correct me if my assumption is wrong. I'm surprised at the coaches at the time because I know that in sports now, they're a lot more focused on that mindset mm. um, coaching. So at that time, was it not something that was really talked about as much? It was more about just getting the work done. Yeah, no, I, it wasn't. It was different. This is mm. like 10, 12 years ago, you yeah. know. Um, I think now, like sports therapists and psychologists, there are more yeah. to the mind yeah. where before... The mind part was um, you've got to, you can't be weak. You've got to make it through this practice. You got to almost like failure isn't an option as opposed to accept failure is an yes, option that's and then learn is. from it, which has kind of evolved over the last yeah. ten years or so. No, nah, it was you couldn't crack, you yeah. couldn't cry, you can you oh, wow. you couldn't be weak. Um, and I feel like the different generation now are kind of entitled, uh, kind of like well doesn't work I'll do it and it's like we didn't have that option you know it's like you fight till the end you you make it um that so, must have been really tough yeah so do you think that's kind of seeped into other areas of your life with that that training I think so um I think Americans make like killers like not exactly yeah. but <laughs> well they do uh, that as they, well but they do <laughs> do that as well um I have my own <laughs> hypothesis over that um but more like just um monsters in the fact of they know how to win hence why usa basketball women and men gold medalists for years mm. um the dog in them and just knowing how to no you're not going to beat me yeah. or we're not losing um yeah. they create this uh this instinct this beast i don't know what it is um that when i bought it here um it works, right? But what I'm struggling with now, I'm, I'm 33, is bringing work home, bringing mm. it into my relationship, into my family, mm. how I am so like, you know, no, nope, we're doing this militant. Yeah. I'm a leader. I don't need to lead my relationship sometimes, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so I think that's the difference in now transitioning. Okay, the same way when I leave it at the door, going to practice, I leave mm. practice at the door mm. and come home. Uh, to my partner, to my family, to my friends, I find myself um, still in basketball mode. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think we all do that a little bit. I think I bring the boss mode from yeah. work and into everything, into every conversation yeah. I have, actually, which is quite terrible. And it's just relax. Yeah. I don't know. I think it is a mental of like, no, actually, I don't, I don't need to be on 100 right now. Yeah. I'm just having a drink with my friends or whatever. Yeah. And I think that's been... Um, something new for me to grasp. So when you were talking about them being so militant and you needing to push through absolutely well, whatever your mindset was or, or feel low feelings at the time or low energy, I have a personal question around mm -hmm. periods, mm -hmm. um, which I think is something that we should discuss more of as, as women when it comes to our mental health and people who... Um, or in professions where it requires you to either think a lot and be in your A-game mentally or be physically strenuous. Mm -hmm. How does, or if, or does it affect you and your cycle? So if you've got a big game and yeah. you're on your period or you're PMSing, do, is it a different kind of, um, I don't know, routine or what, what do you need to do differently? Well, I've found a brand um, that is CBD infused tampons, mm. um, which I find are fantastic. I've never uh, heard of that. That's yeah. amazing. Um, can I tell you the brand? On yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's called Day D A Y E, yeah. um, and they're just naturally um, natural cotton and just soothing mm. of the cramps. My cramps are usually the first two days, yeah. um, so that could drop on a game day. That could not. Yeah. Um, so I found those which are amazing. I don't really suffer too bad. Um, it's more the week before that I've got rain in my food more. I'm, yeah. I'm eating chocolate, <laughs> I'm eating crisps, you know. Yeah. Um, but it does, it does. I, I think I just have to do extra because you are physically losing blood, right? Yeah. So yeah. you need to 
kind of overdose on being um, hydrated to get good food in um, because it's so draining. It's, we forget about, because we just crack on with it. Yeah. It happens every month, yeah, yeah. you know, um, and we don't really give ourselves that grace or that even be kind to ourselves. Like, actually, mm. I feel like shit. Exactly. You know? And the brain fog that ensues and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it is a ta taboo subject yeah. because we don't, we don't speak it really. We do speak about it with our friends, but then with men. You know, you don't, yeah. you can't say to your coach, I'm on my period today, coach. Yeah. Give me a break. <laughs> you can wear it at school, but not when you're playing professionally. Right. You can't. You've got, a, it's a, the same thing of just like sucking it up and yeah. getting, it's just a, ah, oh, you'll be all right. Yeah. Um, so I do think kind of being kinder to yourself um, and just putting extra into what you would normally do, eat, mm. drink, you've kind of, kind of got to double it up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the tampons have been amazing for me. Mm. Um, and just trying to get extra sleep and rest. But some some of my friends um, take birth control so they don't have their periods. Mm. Uh, if we've got a big tournament, they'll try and skip a period. Yeah. Um, and that's really the only thing I've heard of. Yeah. Uh, but I just try to have my normal cycle mm. um, through it. That's interesting. So when it comes down to your food and your diet, mm -hmm. how disciplined are you? So I listen to a lot of podcasts. So one of them is um, Health Theory, mm -hmm. they, uh, Tom Bilyeu, he does Impact Theory as well. And I'm obsessed with learning about microbiome and ketosis and how to optimize my physiology based on what I eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even doing sports. <laughs> I'm not right. a professional sports person. How seriously do you take it? And do you have any advice on how to kind of optimize your energy levels throughout the day? Well, when I was getting ready for the Olympics, I took it very seriously. Mm. Um, no sweets, no alcohol, no junk. Um, mm. um, if I was doing Olympics again, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it the same way. Interesting. Um, because food is such a happy place, yeah. I find. And I found myself, um, when I was being s this disciplined self, getting ready for uh, Olympic Games, I was so unhappy i remember mm. being at the table and like boiled chicken and greens would come and i just burst out into tears oh, no. and one of, one of my teammates one of my good friends actually she was like go to the room i'm not having you cry yeah. but it was just it just got put in front of me and i was like oh, i can't do it <laughs> you know it's just like if i did it um again i wouldn't do it that way but even now um you offered me a lovely drink beforehand i'm a three minimum um, yeah. Maybe I could loosen up a bit on that, and that's work coming into yeah. my social life. Yeah. Um, but I think is um, don't indulge. So I always tell people, you can have a, a chocolate, you can have biscuits, you can't eat the whole packet, mm -hmm. and you can't eat a second chocolate. You can't finish the packet of crisps, and that's like the discipline of mm. you can still have a lovely meal, you can still be cheeky, have your, but don't indulge and yeah. I think the indulgement of anyone an athlete or regular person mm. is where we go wrong you know yeah. like oh I'll just have another one um so I think that kind of um strength of saying no yeah and i um, kind of what I would do is only take a handful and put it in a bowl or something or bring it to me and not the pack of whatever <laughs> that it is. wouldn't work for me. I'd just go back to where the rest of the packet is and fill it up. But then it just stops you, you know, you're yeah, like, you oh, have to think about yeah, you have it to when think you, about yeah. it. Like, oh, it's finished now, you know, and then you have that choice of I'm going back and then yeah. that guilt or, hey, I'm not doing what, I'm, what I want to. Um, yeah. So I say you can, it's just don't overdo yeah. it. Um, I don't know if I remember the episode Sex in the City where Miranda put the cake in the bin. She had like a couple of slices yeah, and put the yes, whole cake in yeah, and then the she went back. She's like, that's it. But um, then she went back to the bin and, and got ate it, it from the bin. Yeah. I could see myself doing that. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably eat the whole cake too. But then that's yeah. it. Why are you buying a whole cake? Because yeah. you know, yeah. you know, and if you don't have that discipline, you've just got to buy the slice. Yeah, and then, true. yeah, I love, I love that. You're right. Okay. So with your, with your training now, mm -hmm. Do the coaches, or as part of your overall kind of, I don't know if it's called a curriculum, what's it called? A, a schedule, schedule or something? Yeah. Um, do they tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing? Or do they assume that at this level, mm. you should be doing your own research and you know what you should 
and shouldn't be doing? Yeah, no, I think at this level, it, um, it's a professional level, it's what works for you, yeah. you know, because what works for me doesn't work for you. Um, yeah. Different um, dietary plans, I've got vegans, I've got vegetarians, I've got meat eaters, I've got mm. people who sleep four hours, I've got, I need eight hours, like, yeah. so it really, there's nothing uh, in different teams, actually, different things but most overall um the thing that probably that they're on is maybe like a curfew if it's the night before a game yeah. but this team that i'm on right now it's we trust you you mm. you're looking after your own self your body um yeah so no real schedule of telling me what to do it's just hey these are your things that mm. are free to you um you know ice recovery here's the physio mm. use as you please or you know, so there's no... Ice recovery, do you have to get in ice boxes afterwards? I, I, I have, there's ice machines now, but I love an ice box. Oh, so really? Ice bath, oh, yeah. my worst nightmare. Yeah, it gets better as yeah. you get used to it. But these ones are like, just like wraps, and then you fill it up with ice and the water kind of okay. like yeah. massages. But you don't have to like submerge yourself no, to like waste no, level. No, there are, there are pl uh, teams that will do that, and that's good recovery for the legs, because the practices are quite intense. So, mm -hmm. tell me about the women. So, in every industry, yep. um, there's a lot of competition amongst women, mainly because there's only room for some at the top. Mm -hmm. um, dynamics of natural jealousy or all of, the, all of the basics. What's your experience been? I think um, we are the biggest critics of, of each other, really. Mm -hmm. um, which is quite sad because we're all struggling with the exact same thing that we then put on the pressure of other people. Yeah. I think uh, looks is this big thing. Um, I'm a big advocate of, um, well, you know, social media is, I think, most of the problem now. Yeah. Uh, for my social media, I do not edit. I do not change. I do not add um, everything that picture has been taken. It's how I post it. Mm -hmm. I'm really... Um, I'm strong on that, I don't care. I don't care if there's a dent, a blemish. Uh, I, I love um, stretch marks, I think they're so sexy. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I'm really, I'm, I'm strong on that. I will r refuse to add anything um, because I think that's part of the problem, right? We're trying to be this person or be perfection. It's not real, yeah. it's not real and, and so, I think that's a big problem. We see people like, oh, I want to look like her. I want to do this. And it's like, well, mm. you know, what's beautiful about you? Um, in this sport, I think there's not too much um, jealousy or I think it's more competition yeah. in it. It's more like, OK, I'm going to push you to the next level. I think it's different if you're fighting for a spot. Mm. Uh, I think it goes up a, a couple notches. Mm. Um, but I really try to empower women and I think it's easier said than done. I think we, you know, we're supposed to empower women and da, da, da. Mm. But like, what do you do? Well, you know, you talk it, but how, what do you walk it? What do you do? Yeah. And for me, um, I really try and compliment and a genuine compliment of women. So um, an example, two, three days ago, there was this boss woman. She was probably pushing, coming to 50 on the platform, fire, like sunglasses, hair done, she had a pencil skirt and mm. she had heels. And I looked at her, I was like, you look fucking fantastic. <laughs> and she looked at me, she was like, thank you so much. And I just thought, you look beautiful. Why am I telling you that, you know? Yeah. And so for me, I think in those moments, um, I really do, if somebody looks great, if their hair, if their outfit, where I, I really do try and compliment um, and because we all make this effort, right? Mm. We make it for whoever, everyone's, make it for yourself, your boyfriend outside. At the end of the day, we put our makeup on, we put our clothes on. Why is it not nice? Why does it have mm. to be the opposite sex to tell me that Absolutely. I look great? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there's so many different things that we're struggling with. Um, I do like this generation is more open to saying how I feel if I'm struggling from depression or anxiety uh, I think mm. that's new for this now feeling those feelings and then outward saying mm. it where our age and you you never told people how yeah. you felt or yeah. what you were struggling with so now I do love that like hey I need help or hey I'm yeah. struggling or 
you know, hey, this is my therapist. Would you like yeah. her number? Like, and do you think because, especially within the sporting industry, you can do that now, there might be less kind of bitchiness or competition because instead of you venting and taking it out on the next woman, mm. you're actually able to say, this is why I'm in my feelings yeah. about this particular thing. Whereas, yeah. you know, some years ago, it would have been more, more difficult to talk. Yeah, I think it's different teams though and different relationships and respect and how comfortable and trust right mm. um, are you going to talk shit about me after after i tell you this yeah. and i think it's all building all those feelings but um i think competition is healthy yeah. um but there's parts that aren't healthy yeah. um but yeah i think we're as women it's hard yeah. it's, it's hard to be successful we're already fighting against the gender part of it um our male counters parts are getting paid more mm -hmm. for the same thing I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so I just think that's hard in itself. And then you add different cultures, ethnicity. Yeah. Uh, it's a fighting constant battle. So being a woman, why aren't we, if, mm. you know, come kind on, of coming together. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is difficult. Um, so, so speaking of that difficulty, what are the challenges apart from the one that you just mentioned around the pay gap? Mm -hmm. So, I think people don't talk about women in sports that much. Oh, mm -hmm. here we go, the cat. <laughs> um, she wants she's making know. a debut. Yes. Um, what, what are the issues that aren't talked about? We can talk about the ones that are known and yeah. your experience with them and mm -hmm. also the ones that we might not know about um, in terms of the challenges and you know, limited opportunities, things yeah. like that. Um, I just think there's a lot. Uh, one, young girls in sport, obviously, football is the biggest sport here. Um, so that's always pushed for mm. men, for bo little boys. And I feel like girls also have a, a, a good opportunity to play football as well. Mm. Um, and then, oh man, there's just so many. I think pay gap obviously is a big, big one. Yeah. But just the respect, um, respect my craft, respect uh, the work I'm putting in and I deserve um, a check for that, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and then also just uh, exposure. So TV, uh, do you see women's basketball games on, on TV? No, no. no. Yeah, so I think Netball has done a really good job trying to get their um, TV rights and on BBC. Mm. And so I think having the tv rights and just being you know giving us more opportunities to be seen yeah. i think what's different about the women's and men's game is there's more like highlight plays there's dunks and there's excitement but then the women's game is such fundamental and beautiful play and we yeah. really have to um work as a team where men can be kind of just individual yeah that's interesting you say that so the technicals of what women do, mm -hmm. do you think sometimes they are much more superior or impressive than the men's because we feel like, or because you feel like you need to be, whereas the men, the focus is a lot more on the entertainment and mm -hmm. the branding and everything that comes around the entire package. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't yeah, know if no, I'm just making that up. No, no, you're, you're right. There is, there is, because we are trying to... There's a lot of people who haven't watched a game. So then when you're getting new fans in the door, it's like, okay, we want to sh showcase yeah. why you should come back, why this is fun. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of people in this country haven't watched basketball and it's my job and our, our job to try and push it and to show like, hey, come with your, with your little girl or come with your mm. family, you know? I inspire little boys. Why does it mm. just have to be little girls? So, um, there's a lot. It's a fun sport. It's uh, a cheaper sport to play. You know, you only need a ball and basketball um, mm. and hoops. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been... And then I think also what I like to tell people, because I do kind of a few talks at schools and stuff, is the um, opportunities that basketball has given me. It's given me a free education. Mm. It's given me um, a, a paycheck and a salary. Um, being able to travel the world. I've played in Australia, Hungary, Lat I've played all over, um, been able to, to do that for free. Um, so the sport in itself and the many 
avenues of um, what it can bring you is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then also you do your job that you love and you get paid for. Um, it is hard and there's a lot of sacrifices of being away from families, relationships get put under the pressure and you miss a lot of things, yeah. you know, family, uh, funerals, weddings, birthdays, births. Uh, there's mm. a, there was many years that I was not involved in those things. So mm. for my craft. So talk about relationships. Yeah. So one, have you got a, a, a height restriction? And what else? <laughs> um, no. No. Okay. No. And two, is it difficult to date someone who is a non-professional athlete being a professional athlete yourself? Like, could you date like a banker, for example? Okay. Um, going back to the height thing, I have another really tall um, friend. She was actually at the, uh, at the event um, and she was like, nope, nothing under six foot. She's, she's taller than me, six five, I think, six mm. six. And she's like, nope, I'm not dating a shorter guy. And it's only because of me she started to kind of look. Um, for me, a shorter guy, he has to, um, my partner now is 5'11", um, six foot four, so I'm five inches taller than him. I think he, in the nicest way, he can't see it. Like, it's just, like, I don't wake up every day and go, oh my God, mm. I'm six foot four. Yeah. Like, I'm just, it's just me, yeah. right? It's the same yeah. way we don't wake up and go, I'm a woman. <laughs> You just crack on with it. It's yeah. just it's just you. And I think that partner just needs to see you as you. Yeah. Um, and then also love it. Um, my partner is quite like, he's very manly, man. Yeah. Mm. He's, um, and I think I probably need that because then they're very like, you know, puff their chest, yeah. little um, peacock feathers. Like, this is my woman, yeah. you know, yeah. which is nice. Um, and he makes me feel dainty and small and mm. cute. Um, so I think that's really important that you shouldn't be made shame of. I, I wear high heels around him. He, mm -hmm. Whatever I want to look like or wear, do your thing. Um, and then, yeah. And I think also if he can hold your hand, rub your back and hug you, what's, that's nothing to do with height, you know, and it's outside noise that they think it's weird, you know, yeah. it's, but you two are fine. It's all the same lying down. Yeah, right. All the same lying down. <laughs> um, yes. Um, sometimes. sometimes. And then, um, and then would I, dating somebody who's not a basketball player, my partner now isn't, um, and I love it. I think if, there's a, there's difference because if they are a basketball player, they understand um, the tiredness, the sacrifice. They, mm. you know, you don't have to explain half of the things. They just get it. Um, but then you come home and you're both tired, you know, uh, but I don't know. I don't really mind it. I'm not really into athletes anymore. I just think mm. it's not for me. And I prefer a non basketball player. Yeah. Um, yeah. Less drama with those athletes. Less drama with the athletes. I think, um, but there's, I think it's just because they're in the lime light and there's a plethora of options. Yeah. Um, and vice versa, I think women athletes, because, you know, I'm on social media, I'm on TV. Mm. If, if I wanted to, I could, you know, but I just think it's also discipline what you want and being focused. Absolutely. So same thing. So mm -hmm. you have the gift of the gab. Sure. Again, going back to the, <laughs> the story you told, which I'd love you to tell at the end of this. Yeah. Um, when did you start getting into commentating? Do you enjoy it more than playing? Which is a random question. And do you have to be really quick on your toes? You? Yeah. yeah. Um, I started commentary um, when I retired. So I actually gave up basketball um, 2018. I retired. I was just in a place of, um, I felt like I had given everything. Um, I had got 101 caps, meaning I played 100 plus games for my country. And I just lost the love for it. Mm. And so when you lose the love, love for something, you cheat it. And I was cheating the game. And I was just bullshitting through it. And I just thought, oh, it's not worth it. So I gave up. Um, I retired for three years. And through those three years is when I picked up the commentary. Mm. And um, 
and that way because I do love the game I love watching it I love being around it and so that's kind of how it started um I commentated and I was like I knew I there's two uh, places in commentary there's a lead and then there's color so lead will be like passes this blah, 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 you know, the, keeps the game flowing and then color kind of like fluffs it up mm. and because I know the game so well it was easy for me to talk about like oh yeah they did this that was great perfect this happened when I did like I could just always bring my experience mm. So it so does, the, are you the lead or the other color? Well, I've done both. Okay. I prefer color because I can just have fun and have yeah. a laugh with it and let them be so serious. Yeah. And I think I try and be lighthearted because commentary has become so you've got to be professional, which any job you should, but just also it's a fun thing that we're yeah. watching yeah. and the person's listening to. So I really try and bring a humor, um, to that aspect um so that's where it really really started and and i do i don't know if i love it more i think while i was taking that break i, I really enjoyed being it but right now yeah right now i'm loving basketball too so have you ever sworn or like broken into like broken english <laughs> um uh, the other day i said um what did i say um bollocks i said um something along those lines bollocking he needs yeah. a bollocking and my coach i was like <gasps> and i was like uh and i just thought oh he does like yeah. i can't swear and that's swearing in english you know but i just said yeah he needs uh. um but overall i do try and be quite professional um but i love swearing i just mm. think it's such a nice like uh, it shows your passion mm. or that you're pissed off yeah. Um, yeah, I've got so, a potty mouth, so I'm all oh, for it. I love it. I just love it. And I am who I am because I swear in front of my parents. I swear in front of my friends um, and my peers. So mm. it's not like I just do it for this is who I am. I love to do it yeah. and just shows my intensity. Um, but obviously there's a time and a place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I've really I've really been enjoying commentary. I'm going right after this interview. I so, know. yeah. Exciting. So in terms of paying it forward, um, mm -hmm. younger girls, you said you do talks at schools. Mm -hmm. what, what are your kind of goals to make an impact and, and pay it forward over the next few years? Um, well, I usually, yeah, go to schools if they kind of call um, and are doing a uh, camp or, you know. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I try and pay it forward when I'm in the game as well. Like, so after the game, I'll go to the crowd, I'll take pictures, I'll speak. Mm -hmm. um, when I go to speak, I just say, hey, if you have any question, DM me, message me, yeah. ask me anything. I'm open. I'm an open book. Um, I'm happy to help. So that's what I try and do as much as I can, really. Um, I have a friend who has a foundation uh, in Africa, mm. Team Madhu. Um, I have, uh, this year I really need to figure it out, but just try and help her. But I just send old basketball um, shoes and yeah. uniform and stuff like that. Um, so there's many ways that you can help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so more for me is when I'm in the game and there's, if I see a little girl there, I turn to her and just say, Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah. What's your name? Because there's so many, I think we've lost that kind of fan touching and talking and just saying, hey, thanks. And, mm. and then she's like, oh, wow, Zania Stewart. We're not, we're not bigger than anyone else. Yeah. I'm not huge and famous. That, just that moment of acknowledgement is a beautiful thing. Would you ever consider mentoring, like one-to-one -one for, for someone who maybe even reminds you of you in, mm. in your come up? Mm. I've mentored um, one girl who was six, seven. She was about wow. to go to university in America and she was young. So she was 15, 16 and she's taught. Awesome. Yeah, she was taller than What's me. Her, um, her dad was actually British and he was um, seven footer. He was really tall, white guy. And then her, I think dad, mum was um, Caribbean, I think maybe. But yeah, you should just help her with just her height thing. And look, mm -hmm. this is, you're beautiful. And um, the presence thing. I didn't have anyone to tell me, wow, you take over a room. But then some people don't want to have that feeling. Um, and I think in this day, everyone's trying to be noticed or famous or TikTok or whatever the new cool thing is, your height is different. 
Mm. You're different from anyone else. Um, and so that's what I just try and pay forward and help. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably what I do. If I did mentor, I have mentored. Um, but just, yeah, help as much as I can. So tell me about traits that you have. Mm -hmm. Ones that you feel like you need to work on daily or weekly that you mm -hmm. struggle with, just whether it's professionally or personally and, and how you're kind of walking through that, working mm. through that process. Well, I kind of touched on it earlier about bringing uh, work home. Um, I'm a very straight hitter, meaning um, if I don't like it, I say it <laughs> and it's got me into trouble. Mm. Um, and I think that's what I'm trying to work on in, okay, I am who I am, so I'm very straightforward, but then who am I being straightforward to? Do I know this person? Is this person a sensitive soul? And I think my sensitive soul friends have taught me this yeah. because how I treat them, they can't take it, you know, or I don't have to talk to them like I'm on a basketball court. Like yeah. in a basketball court, you have seconds to get your your conversation over. Move, why are you doing it? Yeah. You know, or, you know, that's really can be quite um, mm. <laughs> offended, you know, offensive. Um, so I've been trying to work on my um, softness and mm. like I said, not bringing work home. Um, so that's probably been the hardest struggle for me. Um, different things, I think also, um, saying how I feel um, of the strongness, right? You can't be vulnerable, you can't be weak. This is how I've been brought up, mm. is just to say, hey, that really hurt my feelings. Hey, that wasn't very nice. Hey, that was really nice of you to say that to me. Mm. Um, and I think that's what I've been working on, of being open, honest, especially in my relationship, just saying, hey, that was really nice. Because mm. um, you find that I think because I'm such a like athlete, um, even if it's a little chip, right? And you're just like, oh, I can take that, that's fine, yeah. that's fine. And then you take all these one cents, one cents, and now you've got a pound on you and you explode over, the lid's not on the uh, toothpaste. Okay, yeah. that's dramatic, but <laughs> you know, but then you've gone yeah. really pissy, but yeah. why? Because you've taken all these little hits where yeah. if you just say, the little hits, even if they're tiny, hey, can you put the lid on the toothpaste? Okay, mm. you know what I mean? But you've got, you've had that communication, you've set it out, <sighs> you feel good, and those don't add up. Mm. Um, so there's a lot, and I just think, I'm 33 and I'm trying to, I'm in that mid, and I think a lot of my friends are. You're either married, got kids, mm. pregnant, looking for that, or you're alone, and you, then that's okay. And I think yeah. we're at this point of um, what society wants us to do and do and being okay with not having that yet and not mm. having your shit together and working on stuff, um, what you enjoy and, mm. and being okay in that space. Do you feel like you've got direction now? Do you feel like you know what you're planning to do or are you kind of looking for opportunities and seeing where the next phase takes you? Yeah, I think fluidness is better for me. I think, I know I'm a social butterfly. I know I'm a hard worker um, and I try not to stress money. Um, I think those things work for me. Um, mm. It's, I think it, it's for me and not anyone else. I think sometimes people are like, well, wh why aren't you doing that? What, mm. Well, that, that's for you and this is for me and I think yeah. just important there are goals that you need to set and situations um, and yeah I just think learning as I go um, just yeah I just think it's it's difficult I think like I said I was I was married I was I had my stuff together I thought at 30 and thought I was going to be this okay, I got my shit together, I'm going to have kids and da da mm. But I don't know if I want that again or do I want something different or how yeah. does that look like? Uh, and I just think taking that pressure off yourself, mm. but then I think women do it 
to ourselves as well, exactly. right? And, and looking... It's the comparison with friends yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But I think what you said is so important about identity, and I think our, our identity can change and shift throughout the seasons, yep. whether it's age or just the experiences we go through make us question, actually, was that really important to me? Mm -hmm. And do I need to put it on that pedestal? So you said you don't stress money. Yep. It's something that I used to. Mm -hmm. And actually, I can lead a really simple life now and yep. be quite comfortable. And it's only when I compare myself to my old self mm. that I judge myself on whether or not I'm going in the right direction. It's no one else around me. It's just me saying, but that's who you are. And it's mm. like, well, no, that's who I was. Right. And it's just acknowledging that. So that's really powerful that you are able to even say, I'm being fluid yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, and I don't have like the next six milestones of my life mapped out. And I no. know that I'm going to do this, this, this. No, I don't like to do that. Um, and then even going back to kind of your periods talk and stuff like that as women as are in our bodies right we go through so many waves so we go through puberty and then we go through the periods and mm. the pregnancy post menopause and it's like we finally get this um the shift and then get comfortable with it and boom something else hits you yeah. you know and then okay now i'm in menopause and oh, well, now i've got flushes what's yeah. okay now i'm okay with this boom something like we're so resilient and so kind of um uh having to figure out stuff is like actually be kind to yourself in like is you as soon as you get comfortable and understand like okay, <laughs> something changes this, you know adult acne at 35 or whatever or yeah, yeah. whatever it is um your periods change i didn't really have bad um menstrual pains now i'm starting to i'm like okay certain creams mm -hmm. that work for me in my 20s now i put it on my skin and it's like mm -hmm. no hun um and let's not talk about mixed race hair yeah and then and the product the different products, products you have to go through go the change through. yeah <laughs> and you're just learning you're yeah, learning yeah. how to work with that and yeah. i just think wow you you think you get a hold of it and then mm. punches you in the face and you're like ha, okay new product new head like yeah yeah you know so that's why i just think don't put stress on it go yeah. with what's happening today what's obviously you're gonna plan and there's some things that you would like um but don't stress on them i think i do a mood board mm. every um this is my yeah. second year and um, I think that's a lovely way for goals. And some Absolutely. people write, um, but mine last year, everything that I put on it came true. So much so I didn't even know. Like uh, my partner was like, no, put pictures. He told me to put a picture of me um, in the Olympic games. And I was like, why am I doing that? That's so old. I've completed that. Why? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not doing that. And he was like, it's because you have completed that look what work that got you to there that's showing yeah. you when you look yeah. wow i did that i did yeah. those two solid years no eating sweets and then look how fantastic that look it's a it's a milestone so yeah. look at that milestone i was like okay and it was a really cool picture it was uh and the bird's eye it was me looking up through a basketball hoop mm. and i was in retirement at that stage next thing you know it I was playing basketball yeah. again. Yeah. So there was me putting it on there for like, okay, I achieved that. But yeah. all of a sudden, here I am yeah. playing ball again. I never thought I was going to come back out of retirement. Yeah, yeah. I so love funny, I mean, Yeah, board. funny things like that. Yeah. So we've kind of moved on from the, the bit of the conversation that I'm going to refer back to mm -hmm. about changes like internally. Mm -hmm. But even from a society perspective, I remember when I hated my ass. I remember when I hated my lips, and then all of a sudden I was told my ass is great. Yeah. And then I told that it's, and then everyone's like injecting their lips. Yeah. But it's so funny because it's not just what's happening inside that influences yeah. how we feel about ourselves and what we should be striving or not striving for. But every like five to six years, there's, there's a shift in style. trend and <laughs> yeah. it's just, yeah, mm -hmm. we women, we just get, get the kind of short, short straw. I think you're right. Cause it was hard. when I, um, I used to live in Virginia mm. and my host mum and she was um, a white woman, beautiful. And I remember she, she had a pretty like flat bum, but she was like, I just want to get rid of this little bit on the side. I don't like it. And back then it bums weren't in fashion, mm. you know, and probably now she doesn't still doesn't want that bit, but 
back then that was the ideal of beauty yeah. the the flat bum or no you know yeah. it was fat and and the jayla ass Fonda yeah type. yeah and then jayla's ass was the biggest bum out there <laughs> if you look at her i don't even look at her bum now i lo i love jayla i think she's banging yeah. um but that's not cool that's not popping yeah. you know and i what i say to that is you can't have it all there's something that pops on you but then there's something else and that's what you gotta remember if you've got nice boobs you usually have a flat bum or if yeah. you've got a big bum you've got you know or nice hair or something there's something that pops about you and that's what mm. you love but you can't have it all <laughs> well these days you can well if you've you got can, a few p if you've got a little p <laughs> if you're not paying for it just natural beauty yeah. um and i can't wait for natural beauty to come back in fashion Move to France. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Hairy armpits and, <laughs> and whatever else. But, you know, that's even that in itself. We look down on and go, oh, God, but why? Yeah. Why? It's another thing. But I think natural is I can't wait to come back into fashion because I just think um, each woman's body. And even I think it's unfair for us to just say women because the men are now yeah. getting Perfect. pulled into you know, they're wearing makeup and they're doing cute clothes and doing their hair and mm, that pressure. Filler yeah, that filler, that, that's pressure on them as well. And, and guys only have really their face. You know, we can wear makeup other yeah. than guys that wear makeup, which are always snatched. But uh, <laughs> a regular dude, what, mm. the only thing he can have is a, a fresh lineup, mm. you know. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on both sides. But I just say you can't have it all and whatever that good mm. um you know asset is Daunting. yeah enjoy it, it. Mm. i'm sure there'll be time in the next 10 years when a couple has a child and the child doesn't look like any, any of their yeah, parents like, because oh. you're like oh what happened to <laughs> yeah it's true so talk to me about boundaries generally as women i think we struggle to set them with ourselves with our friends with our family with our relationships how do you manage yours and do you have any like non-negotiables Mm, this is a good question. Boundaries are um, hard. I think boundaries come in when you're older. Um, I think when you're younger, you kind of want to make friends and see, be seen as, um, you know, yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. And a yes man. Mm. And I think the more you say no is yes to yourself. Um, yeah, boundaries are just, they're hard. I think I don't have many and maybe I need to put more in place. I think mm. a lot of my friends um, have and I respect them. And I think they you learn with, with what's happened, experiences. Um, I think m more it's relationships that kind of start to teach you what you like, what you don't like, what you deserve, what yeah. boundaries you just, Nope, I think something sadly kind of bad doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, life or death, but something something that's made you feel something is mm. when you go, actually, I don't want to feel like that again, or yeah. I deserve that and not this, um, and you put the boundary in place. But we don't really talk about what is a good boundary, what's yeah. a healthy boundary. Um, so that's an interesting question. I think it comes down to your values. And mm. I think people, not, not everyone can identify what their values are and what they stand for. And I think until you can do that, then you can only rely on your gut. Mm -hmm. When something makes you feel icky inside, yeah. then you're like, that didn't feel good, like you said. But we're not often able to articulate that. why it didn't make us feel that way because mm -hmm. we haven't sat down and said, okay, this is what I stand for. This is what I don't stand for. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you find that your boundaries get challenged more by men in your life and relationships or your female friendship group? I think both, really. I think the challenge boundaries, I think, is more my relationships that's happened and now I'm like, this is what I won't accept. Mm. I think boundaries within friendships are hard because um, especially my friendships, I really put a lot of time into my friendships I care about them and it's something I pride myself in mm. um, is checking up on my friends seeing how they're doing and I think some of those ba um, boundaries are crossed because you are a sisterhood you they are your family and sometimes you say yes or do something or let them talk to you a certain way because because of it and mm. I find it hard sometimes to pull 
them up or for me to be like actually that hurt my feelings yeah. or um so I think it's difficult um and then also I look at myself like um I have been straight hitting and and they learn that about me and oh that's just how Azania is and I'm like actually no I need to mm. um be softer be more empathetic um so yeah I think both are difficult and both teach you multiple lessons in you know it could be the same situation with your girlfriend and your and your partner girlfriend or boyfriend mm. and there's two different types of boundaries yeah. so yeah I think you're right about the values and and your kind of core, um, which you know, but then also change. Yeah, because you know? they change too. And they change, yeah. change too. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's changing. Yes. <laughs> so, Azania Stewart, mm -hmm. O-L-Y, <laughs> are you ready it. for a, um, a quick fire round? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. What three words describe you? Oh, um, caring, passionate, and... Ooh. Um, I want to say straight hitting, but that's not a th third word. Um, oh man. Uh, to the point. What achievement or thing are you most proud of? My silver medal from the Commonwealth Games. So not the Olympic Games, silver medal. Congratulations. Thank you. Is it more important to be liked or respected? Respected. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Um, great question. I think what I brought to this sport, how hard I worked at it, and also um, just I put everything in, on the line and, and I'll do anything for you and the team to win. Do you invest? If so, in what? Um, I don't. In anything in particular I invest in myself meaning um, there's just some things that I just won't um, I just don't tolerate so I always have my nails done I think it's a self-care um, and I always um, meet up with friends so probably should invest in things or, or online or um, houses or whatever but for me I just invest in myself if I'm in a good space and cared about myself then I can give it to others that's the most important investment anyway thank you so what one thing do you want to do before you leave this earth oh wow you didn't tell me about these questions <laughs> they win there but this is um, better this way yeah I think so um what do I want to do before I leave this earth oh that's a love I would like to have a baby mm -hmm. I think um bring a bit of me a mini me um, but also I love to travel I just think I really would love to go to South America that's probably part of the earth that I haven't touched yet what's the single most important piece of advice you would ever give a young woman um I would say um ask questions in many aspects um if you don't know ask a question if you don't feel safe, um, tell somebody or ask. Um, I just think being open and able to ask for information, I just think sometimes we just keep it up inside and I'll figure mm -hmm. it out. Um, and there's somebody, and I just think even a famous person, now they're so accessible. You can DM them, you can message mm -hmm. them. Um, if you don't know, then ask the question. That's a good one. What does freedom mean to you? Freedom means to me being able to speak how you would like. Um, freedom is to go where you would like. And, um, and freedom is a beautiful space in your mind um, to be able to just healthily think and not be told what to do. That's beautiful. What or who inspires you? Um, 
I think my sister inspires me the most. Um, she started her own company. She has a facial company called Blind New Beauty. I'll mm -hmm. plug her for her. Um, but just that she's now turned 40. She's 25, really. Um, uh, that she w had one job. She worked for the council uh, for a long time and she decided she wasn't happy in it and that she was going to change her career. Um, she was single for a long time and now she's engaged and with a, a lovely partner. So it doesn't matter that you're now hitting 40s um, and you don't have your shit together. And it just showed me like, actually, she's doing a job of her dreams. Um, she's got a partner that she loves um, and ha has her daughter. And so you don't have to have it together and it can take longer than what is seen as the right time. Yeah. That is great. And if I was a genie and could grant you one wish, yes, what would it be? Ah, um, I think maybe um, bringing my grandparents mm. back. My both of my dad, I, my grandmother's still alive. My mum's mum, um, but just to meet my grandfathers, I think would be really cool. Just to my dad's um, dad died quite early I didn't ever meet him um but just his I heard about his presence and how fun he was um and then my mum was born in Africa um and grew up in Tanzania so just to really pick their brains and see where my parents got their kind of fun quirkiness or just why they are who they are I think that would be quite a cool thing Amazing. for a wish for yeah thank you so much Thank this has you. been really, really fun. I'm glad I didn't read the quick fire questions. I probably should have, but then they would have been No, really no, they, they came across That's so like, authentic yes. and, and genuine. So, yeah, Thanks. it's best you didn't. But amazing. But thank you so much. This was a really great opportunity. And, and I felt like I said that... Do you want me to tell the story story? Oh, gosh, of course. <laughs> well, the story um, story. Yeah, the story, story. Um, well, first of all, I was, I was trying to read the room in the story story and women were going up and they were telling more um we were kind of like girl powering the room wasn't it really yeah. about couples and like men being mean to them and they've come out yeah. and that was kind of what i was getting the stories at the beginning yeah. you know yeah. um and so i have been for a divorce and i thought do i tell this story of like empowering women that you can leave and you can um start fresh and new and and so I thought, is this it? And I thought, no, that's <laughs> not what I want to tell. Yeah. That's shit. That's boring. Um, and then the story came up and basically I tell the story again. It was just, and also I tell young girls also, this was the day Twitter and, um, and Blackberry had come and basically my, my buttons were sticky and I was sending a sexy picture to my boyfriend and it tweeted to Twitter so that's what my story was but also um the teaching moment of it is whatever you put Can you just show us the pose real quick <laughs> <laughs> the, the pose was this that was quite good wasn't it I forgot I said that the pose was like this but um a little less closed um but what you put out there really does stay out there and I was luckily uh, luckily enough that back then when I when I tweeted it, it was able to delete it. But now whatever you do put out there and mm. and I, I don't know if people are putting stuff out there to get instantly famous mm. or whatever it is, but it really can change your life yeah. and really can come back to bite you. But I kind of hate that because you do want to live in the moment and you don't want to too think like, mm -hmm. okay, this is dramatic, but like, if I want to be the president, I can't do all these things, yeah, you know, cause it will yeah. come up to me. So you still want to be free, but you also want to remember like, you know, live a, little. live a little and have fun, but then yeah. also just, um, remember it can come back and it doesn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> but because that wasn't intentional, did it kind of put anything professionally at risk for a while? Did you have to have loads of difficult conversations around it? And yeah. obviously your parents... My mum knew, yeah. yeah. I think more just, um, I thought it was gonna end my career. I was oh, like, wow. oh my God, I've, I've messed this up, man. Yeah. I've put it out there and they're gonna, and the, obviously the newspapers called and said, we're gonna do this story. Oh. But so for that moment, I had that scary like, oh, um, but then also just 
what my coach was, was were great about it. My mum obviously was great about it. Mm. My mum was like, you look fantastic. I was like, <laughs> where can I find this picture? Yeah. <laughs> and my sister said, well, that's how the Kardashians got famous. So that was interesting. But I think it's more, um, it was then a teaching lesson. So I'm in university. And then from years, every year on, they have um, at the beginning of each semester or year, they come in and say about social media, what... And it was because of me tweeting this picture of myself, mm. it caused this kind of ripple effect of like, okay, guys, you need to be careful on yeah, what yeah. you're posting. They taught us how to um, be in front of the media um, because those are all important things mm, that you... Especially now. Especially now. Yeah. You don't really... Especially with cancel culture as well. There you Don't go. be so careful. Real quick, mm. you know. So um, definitely a fun moment. And like I said, I do randomly Google myself just to see if that picture pops up. I'm going to do that straight away after this. <laughs> it's gone. It's, <laughs> it's gone. gone. Yeah, fantastic. Um, but yeah. <laughs> just send it to me. We'll just put some sticky tape over <laughs> your bits. Even, plug it into yeah, the video. I don't even have it. I don't even have it anymore. Cause, and the, the quality of a BBM picture would be yeah, so yeah. grainy. I don't even think how people know what a blackberry is <laughs> we watching so, this yeah it was definitely a fun moment in life amazing thank you for that thank story you. and thank you for your wonderful time Perfect. and you're about to do what next um yeah i'm going to uh, commentate the london lions men's uh, game so that's also been fun and you can listen to me yeah online amazing give yeah. them a bollocking from yeah. me <laughs> thanks <laughs> thank you thank you azania <laughs> Five year goal. I hated that question, mm. by the way, but I <laughs> swear. That, but you know, what are your five year and feel it go through, and then that yeah. comes. So then, at that moment of feeling yeah. like, oh, what's my question now? And you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. you know. So that really helps me because, like I said, I'm really badly dyslexic. So mm. typing for me doesn't work for me. Um, so I always write it. Just try something different, maybe. Why did you not like the five year goal one? This is interesting. Um. I don't like it because it's too much pressure. Right. I think I'm having this moment of pressure is that my mood board goal was one of them is to buy my flat. Mm. And I started freaking out and like, mm. I haven't even started um, looking into it. And it's mm. February, you know, and then you put in the five year plan. And I think you put this pressure of like, I haven't started it. When do I do? And yeah. I think it's a nice thing. I think the pandemic has shown me even more shit changes in the heartbeat. Yeah. So what am I planning for? You can put in, I think, more nicer goals, smaller, achievable, step-by-step yeah, yeah. -step goals where, yeah. where five-year plan goals. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just put my necklace back. So no, I'm you're right, them. actually. Because okay. like, when you think about the North Star, it could be 20 years from now, mm. or your North Star could be just a sentiment as in, I want to feel fulfilled. It doesn't need to be something tangible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, I'll change that question because no, I have I mean, asked people some... that before. But you're right. I don't even think I had a five year. Five ten years ago, I think I had a five year. Yeah. But now, as I've evolved, yeah. I probably have a one year or a two, two year, years. and then it's all kind of broken yeah. down. Where well, if you say so. what's your what's your plan for the next year, or like yeah. the where do you see yourself, and you know, yeah. and what's your what are your focuses? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. what do you enjoy doing? Um, I think the five year plan is a um, is a tough uh, pressure that we constantly put on ourselves. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I hate it. Yeah. Sorry. But here, no, now good. you learn. Like, <laughs> OK, it's not really for me. Yeah, you yeah. can't answer your five year. No, exactly. You know? so, exactly. So look um, at me expecting things for other people that I can't even do myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no. Subscribe to Tonics Femme for more conversations with real and powerful women giving you insights into their unique journeys to success. My name is Danielle Dodu. I am your host. Have a productive and fabulous day.